Hi, and welcome to today's episode of Piano TV. I'm Alicia, your host. I'm a little bit cold today, hence the, you know, full suit thing happening here, even though it's only mid-September. And today we are going to be talking about the layering approach to learning, yeah, specifically learning piano, because that's obviously what we talk about on this channel, versus something that I refer to as maybe a more block style learning approach. So I wanna share with you why I think the layering approach is a lot more effective and just better for your learning overall, makes things more fun, has a you'll have a smoother experience learning, even if it is a little bit messier, so to speak, than the block approach. And I'll get into what all this means. These are just insights that I've gleaned from observation, both of my students over the years with teaching piano and also my toddler. So let's get started. So let's talk about the layering approach to learning and how that works and how it's a really natural and intuitive way for us to learn. When all of us learn, we do so a little bit at a time progressively over a long period. So for example, when we learn how to walk, we don't learn how to walk all at once. We first start toddling a little bit and then we eventually develop enough skills to learn how to run, then eventually we develop enough skills to learn how to jump. And even those we're kind of shaky at for a good long while until we get better and better and better at it as our muscles grow and develop and we we acquire those skills so the whole journey from learning how to walk starts maybe at say 15 months and to learning how to like run and jump you're not very good at those things for actually quite a few years after that so it's not something that a kid sits down and says okay i'm just gonna do one thing i'm just gonna like really focus hard on this learning uh, on this walking and i'm gonna get so good at walking all at once neglecting every other skill that they're learning simultaneous so kids do learn in a layered approach where um, they're learning how to walk but they're not just learning how to walk they're learning a plethora of other things they're learning how to feed themselves and eat they're learning how to throw things they're learning how to throw their food um, all these other things that are happening at the exact same time that's a really natural way to learn but like a kid who throws food the downside with this approach is that it can be a little messy it would be much easier to chart your progress if you learn just one skill at a time it would be way cleaner way less messy so that's why I'm calling this style of learning block learning it's a neat and tidy way of learning because you can basically devote all your energy to learning one thing, you can track your progress, then you can set it aside, pick up the next block and focus on the next thing. But the downside of this approach is it doesn't work with our natural development, it's slower and it feels more like a grind. So why is it slower and more of a grind? Let's use the example of learning how to play scales on the piano. So let's say you want to take the block style approach to uh, learning piano and you're brand new, you've pretty much never played before and you say to yourself, self, I want to learn some scales. I want to get really good at scales. And then I'll do the next thing, but one thing at a time and I know that piano students and piano players really need to get good at their skills. Um, and I maybe I'm using a mocking tone, but it's really not at all. I say it with love because a lot of um, adults I've taught over the years have a kind of hold scales in some kind of reverence. So that's why this is my example because it's maybe a little exaggerated, but it's not that far from the reality that I've encountered many, many times. So they uh, sit down, they hunker down to learn 12 different major scales. That's their goal. So first they learn how to play every single one of the scales, hands separate. They kind of blast through the memorization of it. Um, they devote a lot of time and energy to memorizing the entire pattern of notes. Sometimes their memorization is a little shaky. Sometimes they have to review it quite frequently because it doesn't seem to stick in there very well, but that's all part of the work, right? And then once they can play all 12 major scales, uh, hand separate, they say, okay, well, can I do a two octaves instead of just one? And then once they can do that and they spend a bunch of time practicing that, maybe they're practicing like an hour a day on scales, they decide, okay, I want to learn how to um, do it hands together. So they spend more days and even weeks learning how to play all those major scales hands together. Remember, this is a complete beginner and they're just kind of blocking this all in one. And then after they can play all their scales hands together, which maybe takes a couple weeks, then they say, okay, well, I want to be able to do it uh, at a really high proficient level. So I'm gonna do four octave hands together scales at 80 beats per minute in 16th notes. They spend a, a cumulative total, maybe like two months of their life, um, getting really good at scales, or so the theory goes. The reality of it is you might devote two months of your life getting to this level with scales so that you can play all your major scales at 80 beats per minute in 16th notes. Um, but you're probably not going to be super good at them because you're um, you're kind of rushing your development. So to put it into perspective, oh, the layering approach to teaching scales would look something like this. You learn a few five finger scales when needed. 
So if you're learning piece in the key of G major, maybe you'll start by learning a G five finger scale because it's kind of tying into the lesson. And then down the road, once you're a little bit more familiar with the key of G, uh, perhaps you learn another piece in the key of G and then you learn a full one octave hand separate scale G major to go along with that piece. And then maybe some more time passes and you have in your repertoire a handful of scales, maybe um, 10 or so major minor scales that you can play about uh, maybe like an octave. By the time you attempt your very first hands together scales, you might have already been playing piano for three years. So we keep hands separate for quite a while, we build it kind of slowly over a long period of time so that the process is much more intuitive and easy and it supports the pieces that you're learning. In this way, when you get to say a grade three level and you start your very first hands together scales, you're already pretty familiar with, like you have some easily memorized scales in your back pocket so it's less of a, a, a grind at that first attempt. And then you're only attempting one octave and you're only attempting a few scales that you know really, really well. By the time you're doing four octave uh, scales with both hands at a pretty high speed, you've been playing piano for, like, I mean, for me anyway, I had been playing piano for at least 10 years before I started getting to that point. Unless you're some kind of savant, that's, uh, that's the approach that we would take. So we spread out learning scales over say, let's say 12 years to get from uh, tiny little five finger scales to very proficient, um, 16th note, really fast, four octave hands together scales, 12 years. So versus two months in the blocked learning approach. And you might be thinking, okay, well, that's a lot of time. I want to be really good at scales way before 12 years. But again, if you are a beginner and you're kind of just pushing through everything all at once in a block style, you're probably going to be a little shakier with it because you're not allowing that really crucial time for your brain to um, form connections and to marinate. There's something that's really important. And I talk about this a lot in the the marination process where you just let the skills soak in the back of your mind without actively working on them in a really direct way constantly. It's the same sort of magic that happens when you practice a piece one day, it doesn't seem to be getting better, and then the next day you start playing it and all of a sudden you're way ahead of where you were in the first day. This, things happen in the background when you put things away. And you're not just learning scales over those 12 years, you're learning a huge amount of other things. So that's the main difference I find between the block and the layer approach and why I find the the block approach to be such a grind. Because really, if you introduce things when they're developmentally ready, when you're developmentally ready for them, when you're uh, physically ready for them, it's so much easier and smoother to learn. Just think about if you had a six-year-old who was just learning how to write. And instead of just learning how to do the letters and, and do basic reading, you were also teaching them complex grammatical rules. How well do you think those grammatical rules are gonna stick? Versus when they're already fully competent with writing and then a little bit later on, when they're a little bit older and they have a better understanding, they have a bigger vocabulary and they're pretty comfortable with writing. Introducing those concepts, they're gonna, they're gonna be better at it, they're gonna be faster at it, it's gonna be more intuitive, it's gonna make more sense. So I like to follow a similar approach with music. The layering approach might seem slow, but it's natural, simple, and intuitive. When you're combining learning a whole bunch of skills in tandem, so for example, you're learning how to read notes, you're learning how to distinguish different tones by ear, you're learning how to do expressive phrasing and so on. If you have a whole bunch of these skills that are always being slightly improved, it keeps practicing interesting and engaging. So at a grade one level and a grade two level, in piano, you're doing pretty much the exact same things. At both of those levels, you're working on your ability to read and discern um, different rhythms in music, you're exploring how to um, play with better hand balance and things like that. The big difference between grade one and two is that grade two is a slightly upgraded version of grade one. It's just a little harder, but you're learning all the same concepts. It's not like you learn damper pedal technique in grade one and then proper phrasing in grade two and so on. You do phrasing and damper pedal in both grades. You just gain experience with it and maybe the techniques of doing so get slightly harder each grade. It's so much more satisfying to play music in that way. So I have a list of skills that I would want every student about to start grade one to know. This was a guide for me and it's something that I still use when I'm teaching lessons to uh, basically make sure that when I'm teaching preparatory level students, so pre grade one students, I'm teaching them all of the skills on this list so that when they enter grade one, they're 
prepared for uh, like they're not going to be seeing say 16th notes or six eight time for the first time now sometimes i think this gets interpreted as whatever's on this list so say six eight time 16th notes etc must be mastered by grade one but that's really not the case my goal is instead to introduce students to a few pieces with these uh, different maybe time signatures or rhythms or techniques in the preparatory level. So that way, when they get, get to grade one, 16th notes aren't a brand new concept. There's something that they've dabbled with already. They already have an understanding of how to count 16th notes. They might not be very good at 16th notes. They, they certainly won't have 16th notes mastered, but when they encounter it in grade one music, it's not going to be like starting from complete scratch. So when I have this list and I teach this in my um, complete piano cl uh, path classes, uh, for preparatory level A and B, I have a list of things that I want them to to try and to learn at each level. So I do expect a student at the end of preparatory B to know how to play 16th notes, but I don't expect them to be able to do it perfectly. Because really, like being able to easily, quickly understand and execute 16th notes is something that comes from repetition and practice over a long period of time. It's not something that gets mastered before moving on to the next thing. Ultimately, perfection is the enemy of beginner piano players. It's really more about just getting in there and trying things as opposed to um, trying to master one skill at a time. Now, that's not saying that there isn't any room for perfectionism or perhaps we could find a friendlier word for it. This is where if you get to a really high level, um, a book like The Art of Learning by Josh Waitzkin is, uh, is well worth a read because of that obsession with every tiny detail that allows you to be the best in the world at something. Um, but when we're beginners, we're not really trying to be the best in the world. And you can't be the best in the world until you just get a little bit messy experimenting with all of the basics in a variety of ways. Mastery will come much, much, much later. This layering approach is how I teach my students in basically when I used to teach private lessons and now when I teach online group lessons in my complete piano path classes. So the way that that works is I give a weekly assignment, a piece to learn, um, technique to practice, daily sight reading activities, and a main or several main core concepts for each week that are new that someone can play around with. Sometimes they're reviewed concepts. But the idea is that we're not trying to uh, master one thing at a time. We're trying things a whole bunch of times. They keep coming back around. The first time you do pedal um, will not be the last time you do pedal. And the first time you try pedal, you might not even be very good at it. And that's pretty normal and that's okay. But don't worry because there's going to be another attempt to try the pedal later. So I like to keep it varied and interesting. And this does make it a challenge and it does move fast, but it's really exciting to see people get actual real results from going through this process. People who in just the span of 20 weeks are actually like making very measurable gains from being a complete beginner to actually being able to play like pretty good sounding music. And I'm not one of those teachers who will promise some kind of miracle. Like you're going to be like an epic master at the piano in like 10 minutes or something like that. I do think that if you want to become really, really good, if you want to be able to play maybe your favorite Franz Liszt or uh, Frederick Chopin music, you will probably need to be playing for at least a dozen years. So there's no sort of like um, super, I was going to say get rich quick, uh, but like the piano version of a get rich quick scheme. I don't subscribe to that at all, but I do believe in um, having a, a really rooted solid foundation based on a lot of experimenting, trying different things and really throwing away the perfectionism attitude and just, you know, maybe some pieces you learn are going to be total flops and you don't really do very well with that. Other pieces you learn, you're going to get quite good at them. But the idea is that you're just trying a bunch of things and you're building a bunch of skills in tandem such that when you're at a grade one level and beyond, you're still going to be working on those same skills just at a slightly higher level each time. So that's my um, basically my strategy with teaching. And the way we run this with Complete Piano Path, um, both the A and the B class, is I'll release a weekly lesson that has videos and stuff for someone to learn, download sheet music, and then every week um, we will have a live feedback session. So people will share their recordings with me and in a live session I'll actually comment on the recordings and give basically give you personal feedback to the best of my ability and time depending. I also work with another piano teacher who helps with some of the, the um, the feedback and things like that in our group forum because a lot of us do this all together at once and it's a really quite a lovely 
community and I do have classes opening up soon. So over the next few months, um, we're going to be opening up complete piano path a for complete beginners in like right away, like basically in a few days, registration windows really limited. Uh, like it's just for a week and I only open it up twice a year. So do hop on the mailing list or um, join the wait list for these classes to be notified when they come back around so that you're able to join, um, simply because they don't happen very often. Uh, and then complete piano path B, which is for progressing beginners, people who've been playing maybe for a little bit, um, that will open up in October. So you can join the wait list for that as well. And I'll notify you when this is all happening. And I will start a class for grade one as well later in the year. So um, stay tuned for all of that. Um, make sure to be on the emails if this is something that you're interested in. Thank you for watching this video and I'll catch you in the next one.